What is going on everyone? My name is Jared Haas and welcome back to another edition of NASCAR Mailbox. This weekend we are tackling the questions after the playoff race at Kansas Speedway. This first question comes from our very own front stretches, Brian Nolan. What do you think of NASCAR bringing back stage cautions for the Roval? Thank you, Brian, for that question. And I will have to say I am disappointed in NASCAR's decision to have stage breaks happen at the Charlotte Roval. Understand this. In the first 26 races during those road courses, it didn't matter. You know, you had Circuit Americas, you had Sonoma, you had the Indy Road Course, you had Watkins Glen. They didn't have stage breaks or cautions. And Indianapolis Road Course and Watkins Glen ran caution-free except for one caution. One of the quicker races of the year. But now you put into this factor of saying, Let's throw strategy out the window when these stage breaks are going to happen. You know, you can pit during those times. You can say, okay, let's prepare our strategy with the other races you couldn't. And also, too, this gives an opportunity for these other drivers to reset. Um, if you look at the Indy Road Course, for example, the first caution happened pretty early in the race. And that was the last opportunity for someone to get up front. Now, there's after that stage two break, which is closer to the end of the race, and that's where all the debacle began. It's the the games that these drivers are playing which causes the issue. We saw that at Coda. Coda was shaping up to be a great race. And these rash of costumes and drivers trying to dive bomb each other to get that best position they can is what caused this situation of, you know, oh, this is the excitement that we need. So it's more of a band-aid in this situation. It's definitely the car that has caused this road course racing to not be up to far, par for fan standards. Um, ironically though, it's this next-gen car is more made for road course racing, but it makes a point where NASCAR has taken the entertainment value than the cost-saving metric value. Because when you put those guaranteed cautions and have those dive bomb uh, cars go into the corner, you're just having a recipe for disaster going into the turn one Charlotte. Uh, turn, these people are going to get aggressive and you're going to have a lot torn up cars and a lot of money spent to repair those cars. So I really question that uh, call to bring back those stage breaks. Uh, it wasn't a like I said, it wasn't a determine the points issue. It was just they want a little bit more excitement at the Roval. And now this next question comes from Matthew Housewright, 4297. They say, the fact that Truex has had the season he has facing elimination says everything a person needs to know about the current playoff situation, all because of just two bad races. It is the reality of the situation with this playoff system. If you have a stretch of three bad races, even though you could took a spectacular other 33 races in the season, those three races determine whether or not you make it into the playoffs. It's just an unfortunate circumstance that Truex had a not good run in Darlington, followed up by a failure with a tire, with a tire puncture and a last place finish where he was able to score any points. NASCAR is in the business of entertaining people, making sure it's exciting. You look back at some of the other past seasons, you look at like Matt Kenseth's 2003 season, you know, the glimmer of the championship was more or less lost during this time. So NASCAR trying to spice up the playoffs, made the chase, and then switched around some of the stuff until we got this elimination style playoffs. Um, the chasm is not determined of what type of season it is, but the result is. As meaning is this, that Martin Truex Jr. has had a much better season than he did last year, even though he was well up in the points before he missed the playoffs. This has still been a good season for Martin Truex Jr., but the reality of the situation is, it's the results that matter, and Martin Truex Jr., you know, if he misses the playoffs, even with being the regular season champion, it tells you the nature of the entertainment excitement of how short these playoffs are. 
Now, I understand, you know, this is what NASCAR's decided with their system on that. Um, I, I'm more proponent of having a full season type of, you know, ch determining the champion because, you know, they're a champion's determined by different factors rather than, you know, being successful in the first 26 and then having really successful last 10 races. But this is the system that NASCAR has now. It's unfortunate that Martin Truex Jr. is in the situation for being the regular season champion. It's not hope is all loss. I don't think it's a must win situation. It is a must point stage in though. Truex is seven below the cut line. So there is a possibility Truex could climb back at Bristol scoring stage points, but it's always a cautionary tale with the playoffs. You gotta have no mistakes. You gotta have no problems and you know, punctures, you can't control. That's the unfortunate part. But NASCAR's put the system in place and this is how it's determined the champion. It's not the 36 race schedule. It is this playoff structure. Thank you very much for watching. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for this content. It always helps us out. And as always, make sure to have a great race weekend. This is Blaine Perkins, driver of the number nine race line wheels, CR7 Motorsports Chevy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those two videos beside me. Visit frontstretch.com for more racing content.